where you're from. And there's a three minute, each person will get to speak once. Uh, there's no handing off of time. And you have three, each have three minutes to speak. And the board is in listening mode, is not gonna respond as you ask a question. And uh, at the end, when the board makes final comments, uh, they, it's their choice, each individual board member, if they want to respond at that point. Okay, go ahead. Good evening. My name is David Wright. I'm a Clarkstown resident, and I'm a member of the New City Fire Department. I have served alongside Alan Hansman for 15 years. Alan and his wife and his daughters have served this community for over 20 years. It's no easy task for a wife or his daughters or sons to have their father leave their home at all hours of the night willing to sacrifice what is necessary to keep your homes and our homes in this community safe. But he and his family, at the last Board of Education meeting, made a request for his daughter to get alternative transportation to Clarkstown South, or sorry, Clarkstown North High School. And this Board of Education did not even acknowledge her. You should let that sit in for a second, because that is incredible. It speaks to character. I must say, I must say that Alan uh, has been very brave in his fight, but unfortunately he has cancer and it is terminal. Yet despite knowing this, he still continues to serve the New City Fire Department, even driving to a structure fire last week. And now Alan is in an hour of need and his family is in an hour of need. And after he has given so much, he requests transportation for his daughter, yet this board turns his back on him. I once heard that the opposite of love is in hate, it's indifference. That is what you have displayed. I cannot imagine that you as a group are this unhumane. I hope this board can find a majority, a simple majority amongst you with character to do something that is right. You see, the Hansman request to provide transportation to Clarkstown North, it's the least that we can do as a community for people that have sacrificed so much. I hope you'll consider our request. Hello, I'm John Pavelczyk. I'm a member of the New City Fire Department. I'm also a Clarkstown resident. I'm here to read a letter on behalf of Alan who could not come out. He wanted to be here to support his family, but he asked his other family to come out instead. Alan, as you know, is struggling with terminal cancer, so we're going to read this letter on his behalf. I would like to express my concerns for my daughter, Jade Hansman. I'm a volunteer fireman for over 25 years and an assistant chief engineer, which means I drive on the roads of the new city frequently. Third Street definitely has a speeding problem and Brewery Road is very unsafe for walking. Winter conditions on these roads will be treacherous for my daughter to walk. You promised busing for my daughter with three emails and a bus pass. Your policy about radius is ridiculous. If your house were on fire and I was driving by with a crew, should I say sorry to you because you're not in my radius? I can tell you we would stop and assist your family. You are part of the problem. You should be part of the solution for my daughter. You made the errors, own up to them and fix it. My daughter Jade is very anxious to walk alone on these streets. She has enough stress from my illness and have noticed a dramatic change in her. As her father, I'm holding each of you responsible for her well-being. Your job, first and foremost, is to keep every child safe, which includes Jade. It seems you are more worried about the errors you made instead of figuring out a way to keep my daughter safe. For the life of me, I can't figure out why you keep hiding behind a policy instead of considering what a child is going through. So far, your offers for Jade have been unreasonable to walk further away from our house to, and school to Derby Lane, which is nearest the, the stop that will put her on, puts her into more harm's way or a carpool. Well, there are no carpools because you gave families a choice on a zoning issue that you never corrected. All kids on our block are going to South. Now we have a 504 to consider for Jade is your way out of the mess you created. As we now know, there are many aspects of a 504. You didn't explain that very well on the phone yesterday, Superintendent Cox. We had to talk to a friend who was a lawyer and have them help us understand the meaning of a 504 for Jade 
since she is a high honor student, as you already know. We are not sure if this is in Jade's best interest. There is no sense to your offer if you still will not provide busing for Jade for the time needed to apply for assistance. When I am able to attend these meetings, my voice will be heard in person. I have already spread the word through NCFD on what you have done. We need awareness in our community on how you turn our back, your back on Jade. Please rethink your position and give Jade the busing that she was promised. The issue is, are you going to right your wrongs or are you going to put a girl in a situation that can be life-changing? For the record, you have put my family through unnecessary stress and I am contemplating a lawsuit for the damage you have caused my daughter. Now, I'd just like to take a moment on a personal note. Alan, I've known him, I've been in the fire department for 11 years. Alan, you know, he's been a firefighter for 25. This guy is unselfish to this community. He comes out days, nights, he got back from the hospital, he was driving a fire truck with a mask on his face so he can serve this community. I think it's only right that the word community goes around to everyone, everyone. We need to take care of our own and we need to take care of each other. Thank you. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank Sue Sherlock and the assistant superintendent, um, I don't remember her name, I'm sorry, for explaining the 504 today. They were very kind. We still do not know if this is the way to go. It really depends on how our daughter, how much our daughter would be put through. And I was told that there was no guarantee that she would receive it or have busing if we tried to even apply for it. Our daughter's best interests is our concern. We also feel this is a way out for errors made by the district. I would like to bring up some valid points with zoning. There is no policy that says choice in your booklet. Under your policy 5110, it says parents chooses to send their child to a different school and they are zoned for then, they first must ask if there is room, then permission, and must provide their own transportation. Waivers must be signed. Why are all families who are zoned for north being accommodating busing to south? There are families on Woodside Drive, Mine Drive, and others who reside closer to north, and they are being accommodated busing to south. Strawtown families are told they are giving a choice which school their child can attend. If your policy is we must do for all, then you must do for Jade. Superintendent Cox, I know you inherited this mess. I know you didn't create the mess with the zoning. You came into it, you weren't aware of it until last March. But you just can't put a Band-Aid on it. Years ago, Laurel Road was the boundary for the high schools. I lived here my whole life. But then it changed to Third Street because there was not enough population at South High School. Anyone who lived north of Third went to North High School. South of Third went to South. That was the boundary. Somehow it got messed up. There is no policy called a triangle. I believe anything that is costing taxpayers money has to be put on a valid, valid and voted for. Transportation for all these families have not been voted on. Again and again, I was promised busing in three emails and given a bus pass. You are accommodating others you should accommodate Jade. I will not stop my quest for Jade to have what was promised. An investigator reporter from News 12 was at my house today. 
Ironically, her name is Tara, and the cameraman's name was Alan. I hope this will all come to an end peacefully. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I just want to let you I'm know. Sure, can you introduce yourself? And yes, you my name is Brian McMahon. I am a Clarkstown resident. Um, I also vote. I've been in the New City Fire Department for 37 years. Alan has been a volunteer firefighter for 25 years. Ever since I have known him, he responds to everything that he can in the community to help. He's always there for the community when the community needs him. He needs you now. We shouldn't be standing up here talking about this. His daughter deserves busing. This is a no-brainer. If it was your, ch your children, and I was sitting up here on the board, your kids would have buzzing. What he does for the community, words cannot even express what he does for the community. You have no idea how many times he's got it up in the middle of the night. Since he's been sick, he gets out of bed and the reason why he's not here is because his numbers are low or else he'd be talking. So we're all here to be his voice tonight. And I hope you hear our voice because that's his voice tonight. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Chris Oliva. I live on 3rd Street. I, um, probably about 100 yards from Alan's house. My son gets picked up on the corner of 3rd and Tucker all the time. The bus comes down 3rd Street. Alan's house is one house off 3rd Street. I don't understand why his daughter can't get transportation. It baffles me, especially in his condition. My son is willing to give up his seat on the bus for Jade. I spoke to him and he said, yeah, Dad, she can have my seat. I wish you would take that into consideration and give the girl some transportation to South. My son goes to South. He gets a bus. It's amazing. The kid across the street can't get one. I appreciate your help in this. Thank you. Hello, my name is Inval Levy. I am a Clarkstown resident. You, as parents, as board members, as educators, as administrators, I ask, how can you teach our children compassion when you yourselves disappoint? How can you teach kindness when you yourselves are unkind? How can you teach our children to be dependable when they cannot depend upon what was promised to them? How can you teach them to be trustworthy when you yourselves cannot be trusted? How can you teach them to respect when you are behaving with such a lack of respect? And how can you teach them it is wrong to bully when the people untr untrusted with their safeties are bullied? I trust, <laughs> I'm sorry, I truly believe the generosity begets generosity, given to and kindness begets kindness and humanity begets humanity. The Hansman family has suffered immensely and the indifference, a series of broken promises, inhumane circumstances in this district has let the Hansman family down. The decisions made by Superintendent Cox have resulted not in the building of better children, as stated in his LOUD interview, but in the destruction of the trust that should have existed and should have been protected. Tara Hansman case is and should be treated as an exception, taking into consideration of her neighbor's <laughs> neighborhood and set forth the illness of her husband and the inability to cart her daughter off to school. It was only upon receiving confirmation of such transportation that she made a decision for her daughter to attend North High School. There are emails from Ms. Medesi, assistant to Superintendent Cox, which confirmed transportation the Hansman family should have been able to safely and rely on. The transportation card and the various confirmations as might rely upon 
the word of trusted education, educator. Ms. Hansman could have been denied busing from the onset and the issue would not have come to be. Instead, she was promised busing, which was then pulled. Why it was pulled remains a mystery. Ms. Hansman would have had reason to offer thanks and there would be little further discussion of this issue. The response would have been kind, humane, compassionate, and decent. Instead, our school attorney, Warren Barrett, was paid presumably the hourly wage deducted from his retainer to determine that the school had no obligation to Ms. Hansman or her daughter. Contrary to the comments at the last board meeting, doing right by this family is not a favor. It is not a moral, it is a moral imperative using Kant's analysis. Setting all of that aside, and resting on policy as your fallback position. The Student Policies Goal, Section 5000 States 5, promote faithful attendance and good work. With the lack of transportation as promised in the consideration of this family circumstances, it is not clear whether Jade will be able to attend school con consistently. Should we not be trying to provide consistency in the name of the policy and not take it away in the name of conflicting the policy? Are we then really promoting faithful attendance and good work? Compelling a, a young girl to walk on Brewery Road and Third Street, there are no sidewalks, no safety passages, and drivers are constantly speeding. Can you honestly say that you're even remotely looking out for the safety, the health, and well-being of a child as a basic element of the role within the district? And if something happens to her, which policy would apply? The one regarding distance? The one regarding safety? The one regarding consistency? Which? These are kids living a, st a stone's throw from north who are transported to south because they have a choice, which includes busing to a farther school. In a sane and fiscally conscious world, north would be the home school for the Hansman family and all of their neighbors. All of those kids would be treated equally and whatever policy related to the distances would be applied to them equally. By choosing the farther school, the Hansman family's neighbors are not only costing the district money for which there was no vote held, but they are being treated in a manner of exceeding the treatment of Ms. Hansman's daughter and frankly the rest of the families in that district. In other words, there is an inherently discriminatory set of conditions working in favor of the kids who are in Ms. Hansman's neighborhood or are given a choice which includes busing. If, as stated in the previous board meeting, the district voted against, why are the Hansman and their neighbors even allowed to be transported to their non-home schools at all? Is this not an inequitable result of the rest of the families in the district? Ma'am, can you finish up, please? Just Thank finish you. your thought. No, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. Julie Globus, New City. Um, I caught on the safety comments by Mr. Lenave. Um, I had come actually prepared dif differently. A child reported to me this morning that he had been bullied. Um, looking at the board on the reports on bullying and the suspension issues, this child was threatened with rape in the locker room at Felix Vesta. It was reported the child's been uncharacteristically violent lately, so it was questionable as to what was causing that violence. We're sitting here discussing a family who should be getting, on the basis of safety, on the basis of protocols, on the basis of equality, transportation, and yet we're not paying real attention to what's going on behind the walls of our own school systems. We can say that we're paying attention to safety, to DACA, to all of the reporting, but are we really reporting if a child in seventh grade can be threatened with a rape by another child in seventh grade? I think we're missing the ball here. Where is our focus? Is our focus on the children or is our focus on fiscal responsibility? Is our focus on a combination of all of them? Is our focus on hiding behind policy to make a determination where that policy is irrelevant at this point? 
If you want to rest your laurels on policy, section 5110, and I quote, all schools within the district shall provide equal opportunity and equal service to the district students, then there should be no choice that includes busing, except in unique circumstances, exceptional cases. Since the Hansman family and their neighbors are given this choice, not only is there not equal opportunity to the district's students, the children who fare the best are the kids who are only a stone throw from north, but choose busing to south and get rewarded with that choice. Setting aside broken promises, a broken trust, by attending her home school, Ms. Hansman's daughter is making a choice to her detriment, one she made in reliance upon a promise by the superintendent's office. Moreover, her daughter is required to walk in dangerous conditions, not considering the safety, and is forced to work within the confines of a policy or a set of policies that, contrict, that con contradict one another and reflect, reflect a monumental level of indifference, lack of caution, incompetence on the part of the district, and frankly, on all of us standing here sitting here and watching these videos. The fiscally irresponsible decision here is to be carting all of Ms. Hansman's neighbors to south when the rest of the families in this district would not be so lucky barring exceptions. The busing for the Hansman family is inconsequential as far as cost. But unfortunately, when Ms. Hansman asked that question in a foil, the response she was given was, it's irrelevant because you wouldn't have a choice anyway. It is absolutely relevant if we're going to rest on a, on a policy that's based upon circumference when that policy was designed to save this county money. I certainly would write a check to pay for busing for Ms. Hansman's daughter. The dispassionate, unkind, and inhumane decision is to compel the Hansman family to suffer more by not providing busing, which would not cost the members of the, this district anything. A bus to North passed right by her street, as you could have heard from everybody here. To argue that this is policy because she lives less than 1.4 miles from the school, you're justified in breaking promises and denying buses and not only making decisions devoid of common sense, common decency, and humanity, but are justifying your actions by relying on a set of policies and practices that contradict themselves. Moreover, the lessons that should be taught to the children of this district, kindness, compassion, decency, reliability, humanity, and justness, are utterly and totally lost. For the sake of all of us in this room, for the sake of those watching this meeting, for the sake of the firemen who were kind enough to come out here and take their entire evening, and for those for those who are sitting in the comfort of their homes, may this not be a cautionary tale to all of us about what can happen to a child during times of indifference. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Item 9.02, comments from the final comments from the Board of Education. George, you want to start? I want to uh, thank Assemblyman Ken Zabrowski again for all he does for us and uh, thank him for coming, although it looks like he snuck out on us. Um, welcome those that were appointed tonight. Uh, thank you to John and to Lynn for um, the presentation on safety. Um, and uh, thank you to those that have come out tonight for your, and for your comments. They're heard loud and clear. Walter. Um, nothing much to say other than what uh, Georgia said. We appreciate uh, your coming out and supporting uh, you know, the a fellow uh, attendee of the school system, and uh, we've heard you. No comments. I also want to thank Ken Zabrowski for all that he does for the school district. Um, and I echo what George and Walter say, that we've heard your comments this evening. I uh, echo what my fellow board members uh, have said. Um, you know, we all may have uh, different opinions, different views, and uh, you know, being able to come out in public and express them is, is welcome. And uh, like, like uh, my fellow board members have said, uh, you know, we're, we're listening and uh, we've heard what you have to say, and uh, we appreciate you coming out. Uh, did you want to say anything? Also, uh, echoing uh, what the board members have shared, we appreciate you coming tonight to uh, share your comments as well. Thank you. <laughs> 